shame is a powerful thing because shame affects our relationships. It keeps us from uh, interacting with people and doing things that we would do if we didn't feel shame. Um, forgiveness takes away shame. And when we are forgiven, then we no longer need to feel shame over the things that, that we have done or the way that we've been. When I was uh, growing up, uh, grade seven wasn't a good year for me in school. I didn't do well in grade seven. I don't know what all was going on in my life at the time, but I just did not, I, I didn't do uh, well in grade seven. I did things that when I think back on them now, I, I, I feel embarrassment. I feel shame about them. And, and um, I don't like to think about um, some of those things. And I don't very often meet people that I went to school with in grade seven. But when I do, I often wonder, I wonder what they remember. I wonder what they think. And um, I, I feel that embarrassment, that shame all over again. Um, in 2005, we moved to Sulokal. In 2006, we joined uh, Believer's Fellowship Organization. About a year later, probably around 2007, uh, as staff men in Believer's Fellowship, we were doing a, uh, a, a, a mentoring program together. And part of that uh, program was that we were sharing our life stories with each other. And um, so I knew that I was going to be sharing my life story with these men. And at that point, I didn't know them all that well. And, and I wanted them to think well of me. And and I, but I, so I was thinking back over my life and I was thinking about some of these things that uh, had happened and the way that I was in, in grade seven. And, and I was just, you know, feeling some, some shame in, in remembering those things and thinking about them and um and but i knew that you know it's part of my life story and so it's part of my history and who i am during that time uh, when i was thinking about those things we went to uh, pennsylvania and i had meetings at a church in pennsylvania for a weekend i think and during that uh weekend one night after church as i was meeting people as they were coming out of the service this man came up to me that i didn't know and and uh, he said um, uh, you don't know me but but i know you I, I know all about you and i said well who are you and he told me his name and i said no i i don't think i know you and he said no you don't uh, we've never met and and um I know that you don't know me, but but I know all about you. Saying, well, how do you know about me? And he said, well, I follow you online, and and I read things that you post online, and so uh, I know all about you, and I know your travels and where you've been. Uh, and he said, I saw that you were going to be at this uh, church this weekend, and so I thought, well, I'll come and listen. I'll come and hear, see what kind of a person this man is. So he said, I came and, uh, oh, okay, good. And, and uh, he said, and today, before I came, I was talking to my pastor and I was telling my pastor that uh, I'm coming to this church because I want to hear, hear you and uh, speak. And, and he said, uh, my pastor said, oh, um, uh, I know him. I was his grade seven teacher. And I thought, oh no, what did his pastor say about me? And and uh, I, I, oh, uh, I, and I, the, the feelings of shame just came over me, and my head went down, and I just thought, oh, that, that's really bad. <laughs> and uh, oh, my grade seven teacher uh, was a person that I have not met since grade seven. He he uh, was kind of in a different moved in different circles and what I do and and had gone on to do other things in life he had been in Hong Kong for 
a number of years and and uh, of course I moved to Canada and so we had never met since uh, since grade seven so he said uh, so this man that I was talking to at church said uh, uh, my pastor wants to talk to you and I thought yeah I bet he does uh, and so he said you're supposed to call him here's his phone number and you're supposed to call him tomorrow I said, okay I'll do that so the next day I phoned my grade 7 teacher and we talked about our lives since grade 7 some of the things that, that, that we've each done and kind of reviewed our lives since um, grade 7 and then uh, I told him you know I wanted to talk to you and I started to lead into my apology and he said well before you say any more he said I'd like to talk to you he said I I have off he said, I don't meet anybody that was in that class and he said I often wanted to meet a student that was in that class so that I could apologize for the way I handled myself in that class and the way I handled that class and I'm wondering could you forgive me for the way I uh, handled that class of course I can and then I apologized to him for my behavior and the way I had behaved in grade seven and asked him to forgive me and he forgave me and so we went out of that phone call having been forgiven and you know there was something about that that was very powerful for me because I realized if my grade seven teacher can forgive me for the idiot that I was in grade seven then surely God can forgive me for anything that I have done and and now when I think about grade seven I don't I don't enjoy thinking about it I don't like to think about the things I did and the way I was in that class but I know that I've been forgiven and so I don't have to hang my head in shame anymore I can know that yes I did those things but I have been forgiven.